Good day, everybody, and welcome to my presentation on Capture Moves Beyond Production Scanning to Analytics. Today, we're going to spend some time looking at the multi-channel capture capabilities that we investigated last year um, to talk to you about how the capture market has really been transformed from what used to be just a pure scanning market to this world of analytics, to this world of multi-channel capture. Today, what we're finding is both paper and electronic documents continue to exist. I am truly not a believer in the paperless office. I think paperless is where we're going to go, that, that, electric, that paper documents will continue to exist, and we need better ways to manage that information and control it. Um, compliance regulations are mandating us the tracking of both paper. We can't ignore the paper. In some jurisdictions, paper is still the, ma the magic record. In other jurisdictions, electronic information is the magic record. So we need to make sure that we do understand and take into our account our strategies to be dealing with both paper and electronic information. Um, one of the things people do often overlook in their um, development of your document management strategy is that input and output process. I talk a lot about on-ramps and off-ramps. And on-ramps we'll talk about today. We won't, we won't be talking much about off-ramps. But the on-ramp is how do I ingest information? How do I take that information and make it actionable? And then how do I use that actionable information to increase my process efficiencies? And that way, paper documents, by able to ingesting that information more accurately and quicker, can still be a primary form of our business communication. Users are definitely struggling to move from this, the paper file cabinets to the online screen. A great example was um, I worked with a client who purely justified their whole imaging solution on the ability to cut down the time to react to an, a customer inquiry. It used to take them two weeks to react to a customer inquiry. By cutting the time down to a day or two days to resolve an inquiry, one thing they, they um, benefited from was their days outstanding dropped tremendously. They were able to collect their cash faster. But they also were able to return money faster, so they were able to get cash off their books faster, so their books were more accurate. So being able to move that information from the paper ingest it, make it electronic, make it available to their customer service reps, help them uh, completely justify their imaging, their transactional system. We still have a very mounting paper problem. Man managing our volume and a variety of information is just growing exponentially. We have forms, documents, digital pictures, electronic formats. Our, we're very inefficient and expensive, moving information from one person to another. Every time they say <clears throat> you have a manual handoff in a process, you, in, you in, do introduce um, ineffective wait states for that process to happen. Inaccurate information access, we can't find it. I just talked about that a minute ago. How quickly can I find information? How quickly can I solve a problem? And how quickly can I meet compliance needs? Important aspect of any paper problem is finding information. Just work with a, a client. Um, just finished up some work with a client who was um, specifically targeting the ability for an auditor to come in and to self-service the audit process. They, were, they had problems with the audit process. They were getting dinged with their audit process. And part of their problems were they couldn't effectively find the information the auditor wanted. So they implemented an ECM solution to manage that information more effectively, but also to be able to deliver that information to the auditor to meet the compliance needs. So what's it all mean? We, can't, we have to improve our profits while enhancing the operational efficiencies. In the, when we looked at you know, the imaging, the, the ECM world back in 2009, what we found was that was a world of operational efficiency. We had to cut our costs. We had to incre increase our profits. What we're finding now is we're moving from that operational efficiency to operational excellence business process improvement, streamlining our business process. But we need to stay competitive. And the competitive state says, I need to do more, faster, with less. And I still need to meet the, the ever-changing government regulations. Ten years ago, <coughs> we didn't have privacy regulations. Now we do. Ten years ago, 15 years ago, we didn't have Sarbanes-Oxley. Now we do. So we need to keep managing this um, ever-changing government regulations to make sure that our information is managed correctly. And that information is, is just exploding. Um, 
you know, we were finding there, you know, every 60 seconds there is, you know, 635 um, tweets going on, 1,000 tweets going on. There's all kinds of um, in interesting statistics around how information explosion is going on. But we also need to maximize our current technology investments. We're a believer that don't throw away your technology investment. Whoops. Um, go ahead and maximize that cur current technology. Maximize what you're doing with the information. Enhance that performance using technology. Technology is an enabler, an enabler to the business process. Do not see technology as a driver, but look at it as that um, key factor to enable that business process better. So what is your ECM strategy? Interesting enough, what we found was 37%, um, actually, let's look at it this way, 75% 75, 75 of the people that we talked to standardized on multiple ECM solutions and some of them were still looking for the ECM suite. So we don't believe that that trend will continue. And we're going to do another um, survey back in the April, time, April, May time frame. So somewhere in the summertime, we'll have more updated results here. But we do believe that ECM suites are moving away, that people are looking for application-specific, solution-specific capabilities. But we also see SharePoint as having a firm foothold in that capabilities. Again, we see three or more, you know, two or more, 63% are two or more ECM solutions with 42% being three or more. Firms are going and organizations are going to solving the business problem. They're not going to say, I want that ECM suite to solve all my needs. They're saying, I want an invoice processing and an HR onboarding process <coughs> and a learning process and a contract management process. And it may all come from the common vendor, if that vendor meets it, or it may come from a couple vendors. But they, but they know that they're going to want to solve the business's needs, not IT's preference anymore. And we talked about cost problems declining just a minute ago. We went from a operationally efficient, cost-cutting world to a world that was more concerned about adoption, use, and efficiencies. And that's really what this slide says. You know, we see file shares and SharePoint proliferation being an inefficient. Forty per six percent saying that's what's happening. That's really an inefficiency in our marketplace. <coughs> we see the adoption of ECM being a problem. That's an inefficiency in our marketplace. If we were better at targeting solutions with specific ECM capabilities, we would see some of these things start to come down. Better management, better targeting of information. And that brings us to our content-centric technology wheel. This is what we define ECM to be. Everybody has their own definition. Everybody, you know, we've seen AIM definitions over the years. We've seen all kinds of definition over the years. Um, but this is our definition. And what, we, what we're saying in this definition is there are two types of solutions, content-centric technology or solution bases, business solutions and transactional solutions. Business solutions being those solutions that are highly <laughs> dynamic in authoring, that are highly collaborative, that are typically electronically started and continued, um, dynamic, many versions, um, updated frequently. Transactional capabilities are um, typically static in nature in lots of cases, but their target is operational usage. The, the what I try to say is making data actionable is what a transactional system is. Whether I'm ingesting information and I'm, I'm bringing it into the system, I'm extracting it, I'm interpreting it, I'm making it actionable, and I'm feeding it to an operational system for processing, or I'm taking data out of an operational system and embedding it into a statement you know, for customer communications management um, or a letter for personalization. You know, that's, that's taking data, making it actionable, that's embedding it in the outbound, the, out, the off-ramp, where I'm taking that information and I'm sending it out to a client. <coughs> Around the middle, though, is that foundational capabilities. And I like to, you know, I termed it foundational um, a couple of years ago, and my view of this was, this is the, the foundation of the house, the foundation of the building you're, you're putting up. So are you building a transactional, you know, building? 
you're, you're building a building to process inbound information to make it, you know, to strip the data and feed it to an op operational system. Well, you still need the foundation. You still need library services and identity management and security and records management. E-discovery is still going to be an uh, optimal thing and taxonomies. You need the foundation upon which to build the solution. And the foundational capability, and what we've done is pulled a lot of pieces in, common pieces in, are those common pieces that will be utilized by either business or transactional capabilities to build the solution that you need. When you look at content, what's really important to look at content is to look at things like the value of the content. Um, one of the hot buttons that's come up in the marketplace today is this whole notion of file sharing and sync sharing. Um, we don't believe that that's an ECM solution by any means. We see that as casual documents, casual capability. And that's low interaction, a couple people, a team with low organizational value. Doesn't have an organizational compliance or risk to it. But as you move up, invoices, contracts, um, HR documents, benefit documents, SOPs, um, as you move up, they become controlled. They become content that really is needs to be managed by the organization because they have a value to the organization. And if they are compromised in any way, they have a risk to the organization. So we see that as controlled content um, that needs higher governance. And then we also see things like regulated content, um, Sarbanes-Oxley content, um, FDA content, HIPAA information, all regulated content that is mandated, um, that is regulated and mandated by an external agency. By looking at this content value, you start to align what kind of tools you need. Why is that important? Well, if I'm just grabbing information that I want to, you know, scan and convert to a PDF and put it in my file share because it's all about the company picnic, that's all well and good. That's casual. But if, I, but if I'm grabbing invoices and I want to use that information to process that invoice and automatically create a check, that's controlled information. I need different kinds of capabilities depending upon what kind of content and value there is. And here's your example of controlled, casual, and regulated content. Personalized, group, um, regulated information. When we looked at ROI, what we found was that organizations um, saw ROI in three different areas. They, the highest ROI was process automation. They really said that information has a value, and if I can automate that process, I can extract the highest value out of that information. That along with paper savings, if I can control that information, if I can convert it to electronic, if I can store it, I can reduce my paper. And I can archive better. I can have better archive consolidation. Those top three drove us to creating the multi-channel wave, by the way. And those top three drove us to analyzing the market. Um, and we're probably one of the first people to actually have looked at the market from that perspective um, and evaluating those vendors. So those top three were which drove us. And also understand because of these three transactional capabilities, multi-channel capture, imaging, whatever you want to call it, still has the highest and strongest ROI argument of any ECM solution in the marketplace. Except for maybe some compliance issues if you're under a highly regulated industry. But I would I would really go out on a limb and say nine out of ten 10 solutions being implemented today are still being implemented for the paper aspects, the multi-channel capture, and the transactional aspects. So we said look to, look, look to imaging as a low-hanging fruit. Look at it as the way to capture information and, and convert it into electronic information. Use OCR. Use the um, intelligent capabilities that you have to convert that information from static into actionable. I like the word actionable because what it really means is I have, this, I have this piece of static information. It may be an email. It might be a piece of paper. It might be a fax. But I can extract that information, and I can put it through a business process, and I can then put that information into a back office operational system, and I can drive value. And I can't say enough. You've got to be able to drive value to find your ROI. How do you do it? Here's my... Uh, the one slide that speaks to it all. If you want, want any slide on this presentation, this slide speaks to it all. And it talks about this whole notion of information can come in in structured, semi-structured ways. We can grab it from a mobile device. 
know, more and more um, organizations are capturing um, pictures and texts and documents and other things through a mobile device. You might have a mobile device that you, for claims management, you're filling out a form, and maybe it's an auto claim, and you're taking a picture of the car, the damage on the car, attaching it to the, to the claim form, and then self-submitting it to, it to initiate a claim. So, and th that claim then could be adjudicated very quickly without any kind of adjuster having to physically look at the car. You could have faxes coming in. You could be pulling information off a file system or a SharePoint. It could come in XML, the semi-structured kind of place where it's tagged, or email or PDF. But the idea is this information comes through this funnel. It gets churned in the multi-channel capture world. And outbound comes things like dynamic case management. Um, we talk about loans and dynamic case management, where you will capture information coming from multiple devices. A great example, a loan might be a form I fill out at the bank. I now need to take a scanned copy of my um, tax forms. I might want to look at um, my deed to my house um, or my credit card statements. And I pull all that information together. It gets put down. It gets pulled into a folder or file that gets put in as a claim for adjudication for the loan and approval. The loan officer may look at it and decide he could approve it. It automatically approve, gets approved. But he also has the dynamic capability of saying, oh, I think I would need my manager or somebody else to have a second eyes on it before we approve it, and dynamically sends it. Dynamic case management allows us to do all that to, to draw a result out. And all that information comes in through this multi-channel capture capability. We also are able to extract data. We'll talk about that analytics in a minute. We're able to extract data coming out of the, trend, um, the capture world into these back office production systems. And what we're trying to get through is straight through processing, alleviate the use of people touching the information, getting it um, dealt with faster. And ultimately, obviously, all this information goes into some level of a repository so I can classify it. I have it available for discovery. And I also have it available for retrieval to answer questions that may be, you know, that crop up about that information. So faster access, more reliability, and I'm covering it for a legal perspective. So how does that all work? So you notice that the left-hand side of the slide is very similar to the top of the previous slide. It's the multi-channels. It's all the different capabilities coming in. And we use the analytics world to decipher that information, to understand what's on that page. So a great example is the analytics comes in. We have multiple OCR engines to read it. So we translate it from a static piece of information to an electronic piece of information. We might have contextual capability. <coughs> to look at that information and say, oh, I see the word invoice. Now, I might want to look for the na a number right after that so I know what the invoice number is. I might see the word product, and I look for a product number after that. But by looking at that, that context, that information, I can now use that information for processing. And one of the interesting aspects is I might take that piece of information and go against a master data management or a data warehouse to supplement that. So I no longer have to do extensive data entry in order for me to enter all that information in, I can do auto extracting using a key piece of information against an external database. Great example is right in Lexmark. I was working with Lexmark several years ago, and we built their capture system and their content management system. And we would take one piece of information, like a product um, ID or a product family, we'd go against their, their master data management and fill the rest of the information in. So now we automatically fill 20 or 30 attributes in that could be used for processing downstream by only having one reference point. And then that information could be fed into a back office operational system. So having an invoice ID or a PO number might, be allow, might allow me then to feed the financial system with all of the details behind that invoice. So what we strive to get to in all of this is operational efficiencies, less human interactions, and faster processing time. So we use the content analytics and the intelligence to extract information, make it actionable, and feed the operational systems to make it efficient. How does these applications have expanded? Well, what we used to see was most of the work was always done in the production area. We, we sent it out to a, a scanning bureau, or we scanned internally in our digital mail room. We might have done heads-up data entry, entering our information. Um, we might have extracted it. 
what now we're finding is we're getting more application specific capabilities. Forms processing. Forms processing might be on your tablet, on your laptop, on your smart device, your smart your smartphone. Um, invoice processing, which we just talked about, extracting information from God knows what how many different kinds of invoices, um, understanding what that is and processing it. Claims processing, check processing. Several banks have actually gone to the ability to take a picture of the check, using a picture of the check to actually create a deposit slip and deposit that, that check without ever even seeing the piece of paper. So we're finding that there's a lot more intelligence in the application specific. And then we're also seeing it on demand, like patient records. You walk into the hospital and you're scanning your license, scanning your insurance card. It gets attached to your patient record. Mobile capture, we talked about forms. I do all my expense report on my iPad. I no longer use a scanner. Everything is done electronically. Um, so you know, we're finding that the capture is moving out to the point of origin, whether that's multifunctional devices, small desktop scanners, mobile devices. But we're, we're moving a lot more out to the point of origin. So we're capturing it quicker and more efficiently, and then we're able to process it. So what's the key benefits of imaging? Obviously, reduce risk and, and around document disclosure. When if I get the information, I get it stored, I get it controlled, I have better risk prevention and risk mitigation work. Improved audit efficiencies. Again, um, I've had a client um, go ahead and I, I think I said it. I had a client go ahead and, and bring in um, a system just for audit capability, so they can sit their auditors down and get faster retrieval of their information and better self-service. Reduces paper costs. You know, reduces the storage. It still is a cost. I don't care how cheap it gets. It still is a cost, so you can reduce your paper costs while increasing your employee efficiencies. Um, you can reduce headcount. I tend not to see headcount getting reduced. I, I tend to see instead of headcount get reduced. I see redeployment of head count, redeployment of employees to more knowledgeable workers, knowledgeable capabilities, skilled workers. So we see them being, you know, <coughs> instead of just keying entry of information, having more higher efficiency, higher productivity jobs. We do see the mobile age coming. We do see it happening. There's no question about it. With the surge of mobile phones and cameras on phones, um, we see a new, a new era of capture. You know, my daughter was just telling me the other day we're going to our um, graduation, uh, college graduation, and she warned me not to bring my iPad because what the latest craze is is people bring their iPads and they hold their iPads up so they can take pictures with their iPads during the graduations. And I was warned I can't, I'm not allowed to do that. But we're finding less and less cameras being used and more and more of the smart devices. Um, many industries have, have realized mobile capture, especially in delivery services. You know, the... Um, the FedExes of the world, the DHLs, they come in and they do a quick capture. The other area of mobile I thought was really interesting was capture, was things like credit card capture. You know, I, I was in a cab the other day and uh, the cab driver swiped my card on his iPhone and emailed me my receipt. So there's all kinds of advantages of moving to the mobile capture world through the web. Mobile capture across industries, just to give everybody a quick example, um, obviously we talked about insurance and policies. Manufacturing for, for capturing uninstrumented process data. Walking out to the field, reading a piece of data, connecting it to a maintenance record. Um, we see that a lot with um, utility companies where they go out and they'll use a, a mobile device to scan a piece of data. Maybe it's a barcode. It goes back out to the content management solution and the map, the, the, the GIS solution coordinates and brings up the documentation of that device based upon where they are on the map. Um, government and public safety, incident reporting, victim statements, healthcare we talked about, emergency responses, um, clinical data, and education being things like you know, teacher learning. Um, we're capturing a lot more for um, even in the admissions process and the administrative processes, we're seeing a lot more capture. We see a lot of capture in the multi-channel world, interesting enough, we see this huge movement from um, a world where we were taking paper in and processing admission applications via paper to a world where we're no longer, we take the paper in and we can scan it if people don't do electronic submissions, admission forms, and we can take that paper and we either key it, do a heads up keying, data entry, or we can do recognition on that information. And what we're finding is 
uh, we're able to respond to our students quicker. In one university study that I worked on, one very university, they took three to four weeks to respond to a, a um, student's request on status of their application, their admission application. After we implemented their imaging solution, they took three to four days to respond. Huge capabilities. That customer satisfaction, you know, increases the student enrollment, you know, the student acceptance capabilities. So let me end with a, um, a capture um, example. Moen, and people that know Moen, um, really are the faucet people, the, uh, you know, the, the plumbing people. And Moen installed three years ago um, a system, a capture system for their B2B audio fulfillment. 46% of their orders came in via fax and 40% came EDI. So for their wholesalers though, 85% of their information still was coming in via fax. So they were taking the faxes and they were manually entering them into their financial systems. Very mistaken laden, very manually intensive. So they were really um, struggling with that ability to automate that process. When they implemented the software, the capabilities to read the customer faxes, they were actually able to do heads-up data entry. They didn't do the OCR, and that would be the next step for them, but they did heads-up data entry, meaning that the information was brought in, the fax was converted to electronic image, we could do a heads-up data entry, we could do validation of the information immediately against the, against the fax as we're entering it into the system, and we can streamline that process. We get the data into SAP, and we can create the order much quicker. Delivers the POs to the work order, um, to, the, to the users, and, the, and now the managers had the ability to, to have a better visibility into each of their employees' queues. So they knew who was working at what efficiencies, and were we overloading? Did we divide the work queue up better, better um, to deal with? And then what, on the back end, we could find that information easier for the users. So that information was electronically available, so when the customer service rep got the, the call, he didn't have to go look up the paper faxes anymore. Um, he could look at the electronic information. So they, they streamlined that process from both the input and the customer service pro capabilities to get their ROI. With that, let's talk about you know, where we see the, the world going. So paper will continue to be a critical informational source. I do not see paper going away. I am not a believer that we will ever be a paperless office. Paperless, absolutely. Paperless, forget it. But your ECM strategy has to take paper states into account. Most people, very interesting enough, do create their ECM strategies. They look at their electronic information and they forget about the paper. They forget about the look at all the channels that their information are coming in from. So you need to make sure you get your on ramps correct and where your channels are coming from. And you keep your and make sure you look at across the enterprise at all the opportunities you have to leverage that capability. Start small. That's okay to do heads up data entry, but quickly look at OCR and BPM. Um, OCR being optical character recognition, BPM being business process management, um, and your enterprise content management to streamline your overall processes and capabilities. These capabilities really will help you get the information in quicker, get it processed faster, understand your work queue and workload environment, and then use the ECM solution to deliver it up for, um, for use later. Look at decentralized capture. I mean, you're gonna, people are gonna look at centralized capture. The capture bureaus are still very, um, you know, doing very well, very productive, but look at some decentralized capture. We're seeing more and more organizations pushing capture out to the point of origin as much as possible. <coughs> And then look, as you do that, mobile capture becomes that next frontier for your information worker. Understand that they're going to want that mobile device to be enabled so they can capture it. Just like I capture my expense report forms, that it saved me tons of time in walking up to my scanner and scanning it. I can tell you that capturing it on my um, iPad is, is much more efficient than, than my scanning process. All right, so uh, with that, um, I, I want to thank uh, Alan. Just give him a moment. That's a fantastic presentation. Uh, for everybody, my name is Charlie Kaplan. Uh, I'm part of the marketing organization at Perceptive Software. And so 
what we're going to do here is uh, is uh, just take a moment. We'll take questions here in just a second. So um, feel free uh, to type into your Q and A pane in your GoToWebinar console. If you've got a question for Alan, uh, while you know while the information is fresh, go ahead and type that into the pane and. Uh, well, like I said, after I give them a chance here to, to uh, rest up for a moment, we'll, uh, we'll go back and try and take some questions before we end the session today. In the meantime, um, I just want to give you a little information about you know, Perceptive Software. For those of you who uh, may be familiar with the company or not so familiar with the company, I want to give you a perspective from our side in terms of how we view the world around capture and content and many of the issues that uh, Alan just so eloquently walk through. When we speak with customers and prospects, we typically see or we hear sort of three common themes, right? Companies in different industries are generally concerned with financial performance. So in other words, how do we go from where we are today uh, to where we want to be tomorrow? How do we, you know, appropriately manage ex expenses while, you know, growing our top line? Second, how do we manage risk, right, particularly unseen risk in the organization? And then finally, how do we allow for future flexibility, understanding that, you know, economic climates are, uh, are uh, constantly in flux, you know, there's, uh, you know, we need, you know, uh, flexibility in, in uh, everything that we do. And so to accomplish this, Right? Organizations have invested in core systems. These are the systems that we use day in and day out to manage the most critical aspects of the business. And so with the investments there, we've typically you know, made investments in people who have designed, built, uh, maintained these systems, these core systems, content systems, uh, transactional systems for the organization. Clearly we've invested time because uh, if you're with larger organizations, I mean, in fact, you know, and if you've done anything like an ERP implementation, I mean, these can be projects that go on for years as they're not only initially implemented, but as they're rolled out across the organization, continually optimized and, and so forth. And then, of course, there's money, right? Um, the, the hard dollar costs of the software infrastructure are not insignificant, but you think about just the amount of, you know, back to the time and people. These are significant investments for our organization. And so, We've made those investments, and clearly they are strategic in nature. But when we go now and we look, we look at our ability to have visibility and control of those systems and outside those systems, we, we, you know, we run into some interesting challenges. For example, in, in the area of process, right? Our core systems are designed to handle the uh, process, be it workflows for invoice processing or order processing or maybe case management, loan processing, and so forth. But what we find from uh, Allen's firm and, and similar firms is as much as 70% of process uh, and the tasks associated with process actually exist outside of those core systems. So in effect, they're, they're unmanaged and present opportunities for risk. On the content side, Right? It's very much the same issue. And, and uh, you know, industry analysts and so forth say as much as 80% of information is unstructured. And, and so that doesn't necessarily fit with these core systems that we've got that required structured information, database-driven information to be effective. And so what this does is it effectively leaves gaps, gaps that can, you know, allow uh, untapped revenue potential, certainly uh, cause you know, potential risk, uh, audit, compliance issues. And so when you go and you look, I mean, we basically ask the question, if, if you could, how could we potentially expand the scope of our horizon, in effect, fill in the gaps in process and content that will allow us to boost our financial performance, help manage risk, and certainly ensure future flexibility. And so what's the answer? Well, you know, at Perceptive, we've really invested heavily, not only in the core systems that we have, but if you know something about the company, we continue to invest through acquisition into rounding out this portfolio of, of complementary technologies that really help us uh, manage all of process and all of content management, whether we deliver them as individual applications or as a suite of technologies. Uh, the idea is to help bridge the gap between your existing applications and infrastructure so that you have better visibility uh, and better uh, control. 
In the world of process management, what we mean by this is really the tools and the capabilities that allow you to continuously improve, to discover process, uh, design new process, execute it or formally uh, implement it in your organization, and then of course provide for the analytics and feedback so that it's a constant, you know, continuous improvement uh, uh, cycle in your organization. This is what the best companies in the world continue to focus on. On the flip side, right, there's, there's all about the content. And today, we've, we've talked a lot about the front end of the process, which is all about capture. But once that information is in your systems, right, it's clearly you have to manage it, you have to pro provide uh, appropriate accessibility so that you can kind of live toward this vision of anybody having access to the right information at the right time to make their uh, jobs and functions much more effective, right? So that's how to kind of how we view the world about content and process management, how they come together in a suite of solutions that really help optimize uh, organizations. There are sort of four areas of technology of perceptive software when we think about product families uh, that our customers come, you know, for both advice and, and execution. Uh, we talk about on the front end, it's, it's very much about capture, and that's what we focused on today. But capture is a critical front end for uh, content management, cer certainly process design, uh, implementation, and optimization. And then, of course, on the back end, right, it's really about being able to get access to the information you need, the specific information you need to make your job more effective. Why perceptive? Uh, it's really about three things that are important to the organization, again, uh, based on, you know, why customers uh, come and work with us. Clearly, we've got innovative technology. We've got some of the best technology in the market for all of the components that I just shared with you. In fact, it's world-class technology uh, as individual components and certainly as a platform. Uh, customers come to work for us not only for the technology itself, but really for the broader industry experience that we have. And this industry experience is both with our people, the people that can help design the solutions that you need to run your business. It's also with the expertise that we've built into the solutions. So as a result of having done uh, the work that we've done over many, many years and, and many, many customer implementations, we're actually take, able to take that information uh, and, and wrap it into many of our solutions so that out of the box they can deliver uh, very, very good results you know, across different industries, vertical industries and applications. And then finally, it's about the solutions that we bring to market, right? Um, uh, customers don't come to us, you know, for point solutions, but rather for things that can help them literally transform their businesses. And we're proud to say that we work with some of the largest and best known companies in the world. As you look across this, they range from uh, banking and financial services to manufacturing companies to transportation, logistics, energy, oil, and gas, and this is just sort of a small sample shot. Um, the thing I think I'm, I'm always most struck by uh, in these customers, many of whom I've worked with personally over the years, uh, these companies have the ability to select any technology in the world uh, for, you know, for processing, whether it's content or, or process, and uh, we're proud to say that, you know, having done evaluations and put every solution on the planet to test, uh, they've se selected to work with us at Perceptive Software. Sorry about that. More specifically, let me give you a couple of examples. And uh, Alan spoke to this, I think, pretty pretty eloquently. In these cases, right, these organizations, I'll speak to uh, several different types of processes that they're running. But um, these are all, you know, most of these companies you know uh, by their brands and the products or services that they deliver. But the thing that I offer to you is, these companies, many, if not all of the companies on this list, have actually been awarded industry recognition for how they've literally transformed back office operations. So for example, uh, Disney, who is pretty well known around the world, uh, implemented uh, accounts payable automation using the core capture solution uh, from Perceptive Software. And the thing that was important to Disney was Number one, they had uh, existing technology that wrapped around their SAP system for, you know, that provided EDI, provided electronic invoicing, and yet at the end of the day, uh, they still faced, you know, hundreds of thousands of documents, paper and electronic documents that were being keyed into uh, to the, to the organization 
uh, every year. And so with this, they were actually uh, they invested in our uh, intelligent capture solution in their shared services environment. We had it up and running in less than 100 days. And the value to that is clearly once Disney made the decision to go, it was very important that they achieve minimal time to value, right? Uh, within uh, less than 100 days, it was in production. And in their case, they wanted to redeploy the headcount that had previously been doing low value added work, uh, keying data and so forth, so they were able to redeploy. Similar with uh, Bluebonnet, this was a broader solution of both content and capture. And in this case, uh, they cut their cycle time, including invoice approvals, from 30 days down to less than a week, which, uh, you know, similar to what uh, Alan was describing, I mean, simply collapsing the amount of time it takes to get information into your core systems can pay huge dividends in terms of both customer service, cycle time reduction, ability to take early payment discounts, and so forth. And the list goes on down. Uh, as I sort of stream through these, you can see, you know, healthcare and energy, um, these companies have largely standardized on uh, the capture technology from Perceptive Software, like I said, to uh, reduce the cost of data entry, which is clearly you know, one of the key benefits, but also to improve cycle times and virtually eliminate the errors that are often introduced uh, through manual keying. And of course, if you'd like more information about any of those customers or any of the case studies, uh, you're free to contact us and we'd be happy to follow up with you. So with that, at this point, what I'd like to do is uh, open it up for some questions. And uh, so I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Like I said, if, uh, if you've got questions, you are welcome uh, to, uh, to type them into the Q&A pane. And so uh, as those are coming in, I'll, uh, let me go ahead. I do have a couple of questions here that have started to come in. So, uh, Alan, is it okay if I throw a couple of questions over to you? I'm ready to go. Yeah, Thank very you. good. All right. So um, let me ask you this. This is, this is an interesting question that I was just asked yesterday, in fact, in a discussion I was having here. Is, do you have any sense of how much inbound content has shifted to electronic format versus traditional paper copy? So that's an interesting question. You know, we're still seeing a lot of paper, um, but more and more what we're finding is um, information is coming in through emails and PDF attachments. They're coming in through electronic forms on the web. Um, we're getting, you know, so a lot more of that traditional paper-based information is coming in electronically, but it also is coming in in an electronic form of a piece of paper, so a PDF you know, rendition of what a piece of paper would look like. So I do think that we're um, seeing a shift from paper to electronic, but I don't think we're seeing a shift off of um, the paper form, the paper rendition, to a more electronic, data-oriented kind of manner. So it's interesting to see that um, in what's going on um, to that electronic way, but we're still seeing that we have to have the um, tools in place to extract the data to be able to do some recognition on it because that, that information is not coming in in a way that we can parse it out into pure data. Right. Yeah, understood. Interesting. And, um, you know, at least from our experience as well is, right, um, it becomes a, uh, it, you know, it may not be uh, fully converted to all electronic data, but it's certainly an efficient way to share information, uh, very low cost, particularly when you look at things like using PDF. Uh, images and so forth. I think the cost of transport, particularly via email and so forth, is very low. And so it's a uh, seems to me to be a fairly ubiquitous way uh, to send information. Yes. Let me ask you another question. This is a good one as well. Is uh, how can multi-channel capture bring in useful data from social media like YouTube and Facebook and all the other things that we're using these days to to communicate? So what what's interesting is that um, marketing organizations primarily, as a good example, are using the multi-channel capabilities to reach out to Facebook and Twitter and um, some of the social media in, um, areas to look at how effective their marketing programs are. And <clears throat> what we're finding is um, this capture of all this multi-function, this multi-channels, the social media areas, um, and the ability to parse the information through some um, contextual analysis, um, some OCR, 
some, you know, the ability to turn that information to actionable and parse it out, we're then able to take that information and trend it, use it as analytics to look at the effectiveness of our programs. So what, we're, what we're, we've seen is organizations will put out a marketing program or a sales program where they'll highly discount a piece of product, and then they'll look at the social media, they'll monitor it, they'll parse out, they'll look for words like, you know, something related to the sale or something related to the, the marketing effort to look at how effective that effort has been. So the, the social media channels are growing um, to becoming such an important aspect of organizations' ability to see how effective their communication really is. Yeah, it's interesting. It's almost like, uh, you know, giving you the ability to uh, eavesdrop on uh, quite literally, potentially millions and millions of conversations going on every day, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's both uh, very, very powerful. So as a marketing guy, right, I mean, that's, to me, that is uh, extraordinarily powerful. It's also a little frightening, I suppose. Yeah, I think it is. I think, you know, we, we hear too much going on. And you know, you know the saying, you know, if you put it on the Internet, it's going to be known by anybody. So <laughs> That's right. Um, let me ask you about this. This is another good question. Uh, how do you see cloud impacting you know, multi-channel and even mobile capture? So we're actually what we're finding is that organizations are using the cloud as a collection point and a processing point. And we're finding that even in, transactional, in the transactional world, where instead of having to have a connection back into your corporate network to move all those images back, they're pushing them to the cloud, they're doing the processing in the cloud, um, the data extraction, the data validation work, and then they're moving that information from the cloud back on-prem into the back office systems. And what they're finding is the fact that they, the cloud gives them better connectivity to better resources around the world, um, more ubiquitous kind of capabilities, um, and they're, they're able to leverage um, some very powerful um, recognition engines that they, could pro they might not be able to even handle on-premise. Right. Interesting. So I got a, another question in here. This was based on uh, one of the things that I had mentioned about, you know, one of the customer implementations. I believe it was Disney. And it said, you know, we talked about um, uh, headcount reduction not necessarily being a primary cost driver or not maybe, you know, being the most uh, strategic part of, you know, why that organization was, uh, you know, uh, looking at, at um, or in, in some cases broader organizations, why they're, they're not looking at uh, data capture. And uh, it's interesting because, it, you know, and please comment on this, but from my perspective, right, what we're seeing is over the past several years, I, my sense is, and, and again, particularly in back office operations like accounts payable and accounts receivable, maybe um, even into order processing, most organizations have uh, gone through and reduced headcount. So I just don't talk to too many folks in accounts payable, for example, who say they're still overstaffed. In fact, it's quite the opposite, right? I think for these transactional processes, you know, the expectation is that with some technology and uh, with perhaps longer hours and more focus, you know, the expectation is that people are just simply going to get more work done. Um, now what I'm seeing with many companies, right, is we are more, much more in a growth phase. And so a lot of organizations have been sitting on the sidelines uh, as they move back into expansion modes through, you know, organic growth or uh, acquisition, their challenge is not how do they cut expenses, but how do they manage expenses and, and grow. And I think that's where automation is filling an important role is because, right, it, it's hard to recruit, hire, maintain, you know, train and maintain people. And yet, I think when you find technology that can help you do that, it really starts to alleviate a lot of that pressure. I mean, would you agree? I definitely agree with you, Charlie. I think that what we're finding is um, our last couple surveys have shown that we've moved from a um, operational efficiency, cost-cutting measures, to more of a productivity um, expansion mode. And I agree 100% with that. And what, with that comes um, the need to do, to need to be more efficient, the need to be more customer-centric, the need to be able to respond to your customer faster. and. Um, we don't want, we're not in the, we're not in the re resource cutting mode as we're in the process of becoming more customer centric and what do we do to become more efficient at what we do. Um, and that efficiency is not about cutting resources, but it's, beca it's about becoming agile and um, better at, at dealing with information. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, I agree. That's interesting. Uh, it's actually really exciting too, because I think as a lot of these transactional processes, the things that you know we, we would sort of seem routine or repetitive, um, you know, broad technologies beginning to take on more of those. And what it really opens up, and again, what I see from customers is some really exciting ways that they're using the data, right? Uh, using the analytics, really starting to understand more about how the business runs rather than being solely focused on kind of the day-to-day -day grind of, of processing. And it's uh, some tremendous innovation in, in analytics. We hear a lot about big data. I'm not always sure that people know exactly what that means. but. Um, when you see it put to use and driving demonstrable business value, I think it's really impressive. Let me um, let me ask you another question here. So this is a this is a good one. Um, where would you say is the best point to start when you're building or reconfiguring a business process to take advantage of multi-channel capture? Do you really start that at the beginning? Do you start it with an end user? What is your recommendation? <laughs> So my, my biggest recommendation is to um, flow out your business process, look at your, your disconnects, look at your places that you can become more efficient for passing information, look at, look at places that turning information, um, static, unstructured information into actionable information can increase the process. That could be anywhere. That could be at the capture. That could be um, encouraging your partners to become more forms-based and, and um, you know, make, making like electronic purchase orders or invoicing processing online. Um, a subcontractor for a construction group could submit all of their invoices electronically or right into the system online. Look at the business process. Map your process out. Look at the, the steps in that process that you can become more effective by turning that unstructured information into the actionable information. So there's no, there's no clear answer. You could do it at point of origin, like a FedEx or expense reporting, other things like that, where you push out the capture right to the point of origin. And you could also streamline that process downstream a little bit when you're turning that information into more actionable capabilities. Right. Yeah, I would agree. The, the, the thing I would add to is, um, which seems you know, applicable and, uh, and what a lot of organizations do is, right, you also determine the value of that information along those stages and uh, it becomes something where I think, I don't know that, um, you know, automation, if you'll call it, full automation is really uh, uh, so much of a destination as it is sort of a, a continuous process, right, and so I think you take on the higher value, you know, added uh, functions earlier and as you begin to make those routine or standardized or automated and efficient, I think it really allows you to then kind of move to the next one in sequence. So it's kind of a, of a constant and consistent process, you know, uh, uh, and performance, you know, uh, efficiency automation journey, if you will. Um, if you were to pick out one thing to focus on when you started a multi-channel capture strategy, what, what would that be? What information I can use? Where, where is my most effective piece of information that I can make actionable? Where do I spend a lot of time in a manual productive mode? So is it in invoice processing? Is it in expense processing? Is it in claims processing? So look at the process that could benefit the most from an automated perspective. Um, and then once you've determined the process that you might be able to, that benefits the most, then look at the steps in the process that you can actually implement some multi-channel capture to um, streamline those steps. But it all comes back to use cases. It's not a technology issue. Go back to the use case, look at the business process, look at the, op the, you know, the opportunities you have in that business process, and then, then apply the technologies to the different steps of the process. Right. Hey, you had made a comment, right, which I thought was, was pretty compelling that you see uh, transactional capture and the ROI that's associated as being an important part of, you know, the broad content management space today. It, it, it is the low-hanging fruit. I can't, I can't stress it more. You know, you have better opportunity to define a real ROI with transactional capabilities than you do in any other kind of content management. Yeah, so you definitely can streamline. You can put cost to it. You can, you know, um, 
justify it. It's just a very, very straightforward um, area. So uh, just one or two more quick questions for you. Um, what are employees doing with all the mobile devices we keep hearing about? I mean, you gave some good examples, but it seems like there must be more going on to justify these, these massive growth rates. They're, no. So they're using it for email. They're using it for, um, for applications. So a lot of sales organizations, Salesforce kind of capabilities, are pushing out um, information to their Salesforce via mobile devices, presentations, um, you know, pharmacy. Pharmaceutical representatives use it to do presentations and information sharing for their doctors. Um, you know, from a capture perspective, mostly it's being used um, to capture that paper at the point of origin. So again, it's the, it's the logistics world. It's um, the employee being um, empowered to be able to be more flexible in capturing their information. It might be an invoice capture where you're capturing an invoice instead of going to a central office it might come to a remote office and you don't have to ship it off, you just capture it um, electronically. So I think that we're finding the mobile devices um, have both a collaborative, interactive presentation style, but also from the multi-channel perspective, it's how do I get information quicker into the system for processing and how, how can I use that mobile device, because we're a mobile workforce and we don't have offices all the time, we need to move that capture and that capability that we normally would have done in an office with a multifunctional or scanner out to where the employee is. Right. That's interesting. Um, this, it, I think the last question I have time for is, uh, you know, we, uh, we work with organizations, right, that are in maybe some of the more developing regions of the world, right? So, um, you know, still in many cases, be it in government agencies or maybe even in, you know, private sectors, there's still a heavy reliance on paper. And in some sense, there's a reluctance to give the paper up. Uh, what kind of advice do you offer for both vendors and uh, the companies or organizations themselves to start to, you know, move towards more electronic processing? So, so here's, my, here's my recommendation. You're not going to give the paper up, unfortunately. What I'm going to tell you is, into actionable, into, into the business process, but two, because of what the nature of what you just said, a remote area, rural area, things like that, you're, you're open to disaster. And getting that, that piece of paper scanned into a, an electronic, a content management repository gives you instant disaster recovery. Right. So it's not always about the business process. Um, you have to look at what the business function demands, and this business function demands getting the paper into some kind of electronic form for archiving. You can still use the paper if you're tied to it. I'm not going to tell you to get rid of paper. What I'm going to tell you is, though, putting in electronic capabilities gives me much more backup and much more ability to share that information. Perfect. So uh, before we wrap up, Alan, anything else you want to add? Uh, my, my, just my last comments to this would be, you know, when, you, when you're looking to do an enterprise content management solution, you're looking for ROI, you're looking for capabilities, transactional capabilities, multi-channel capture, turning unstructured information into actionable capabilities tends to be a place that you can find some real easy ROI and easy justification. Get yourself started. Start small. Pick a easy um, known process like invoice processing, and uh, move from there. And I think you'll you'll find you're going to be very successful. Fantastic. So thank you, Alan. I really appreciate uh, the session today. Thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, please stay tuned. We run webinars quite frequently. So if you check into the PerceptiveSoftware.com website uh, and check the calendar of events, we hope you'll join us in the future as well. Thanks, Alan. Thank you.